Okay, we're going to try and do this in one take. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very last uh, vlog regarding Deep Thought here. It is done. In fact, I've even got a program written for it already. So, we're going to go ahead and turn it on. We might see a little bit of lag as it's running, whilst I go ahead and demonstrate the program that it has in, um, in program memory already, uh, as well as... Um, what's new, because I did add a few features here. I'm just going to go ahead and reset this real quick. And we should be off to the races. Cool. So, like I said, um, Deep Thought is complete. We've uh, made some changes since the last vlog. Um, and even though the vlog that you're, you saw was posted maybe a few days ago, I understand that I did make that a couple days ago, maybe about a week or two. Um, but since that last vlog, I've, um, I've added the RAM. So we've got eight, uh, eight nibbles of RAM, so four bytes. Um, but of course, because the bus width is four, I'm going by nibbles. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you just saw it perform a write to the RAM there, so that was fortunate. But yeah, it comes with, uh, by default, eight um, nibbles. And then there are four I.O. I was going to add a random number generator, but I you know, didn't feel like it. So two inputs and two outputs, or inputs and outputs. And this is quite laggy. I'm actually down to about 30 FPS as it's doing its processes here. So let me go ahead and just go to video settings. We'll bring that down to maybe 7. Ugh. <laughs> okay, so back up to... Nope. Eh, we're dipping down, but not as bad. Okay. Uh, so yeah, like I said, there's the uh, the RAM that's been added, the um, IO. Uh, and of course, we know about the expansion bus now. Um, there's one more thing that I added, very small thing, but before I go on, like I said, this is done, but you notice there's a lot of open space. I was not anticipating this. I was expecting this to be quite full. Um, so I guess it's no longer a cube shape, but more like a, a parallelogram rhombus. I don't know what, what name for the shape is, like a sloped cube, I guess. Uh, maybe some mathematician will uh, be able to correct me on what this is. Um, but anyway, so it's not quite a cube, but I'm probably going to build a cube-esque shape around it, just because I want to uphold the, the cube shape, because this is deep thought, it needs to resemble somewhat of a cube. Um, and then the last thing that I added, very, very small thing, was a uh, line to reset the carry flag. In fact, you just it's running that command right now, uh, reset carry. Um, and what that does is it uh, turns the carry off, because the way my ALU works, if I haven't explained this before, is the carry is always feeding back into itself. So if there's a carry on, if there's a one on the carry flag, there's a carry in being introduced to the ALU. And that allows you to do multi-byte, or multi-nibble in this case, um, arithmetic functions, uh, which is what this program is demonstrating. It's actually performing multiplication uh, on two inputs here. Um, and of course, because we have two 4-bit inputs, in order to accommodate for the size, we need a 8-bit uh, output. So what this is doing is it's uh, demonstrating uh, multi-byte or multi-nibble um, arithmetic functions, as well as uh, multi-nibble storage of multi-nibble arithmetic functions. So these first two storage locations here is the answer. The third address is the count. And then the fourth one, I'm not sure what's going on over here. Um, that might be a fault with the wiring? I don't know. I did hear some pistons going off earlier. Maybe that was just it freaking out or something. But anyway, like I said, we got a multiplication uh, program going on here, and it's multiplying two numbers. Uh, takes all 16 instructions to do this. Um, and I'll have a pseudo code written up for you so you can see what's going on. Um, but it... This one program demonstrates everything. Um, it demonstrates the move from and to RAM. Uh, it demonstrates move from I.O. Um, it demonstrates uh, arithmetic functions, immediate arithmetic functions, and multi-nibble arithmetic functions. Uh, it also demonstrates, of course, halting, um, reset carry, and conditional and non-conditional jumping. So this program, I chose this program because, like I said, it, it easily demonstrates all of that in uh, one program. <laughs> and then uh, just as a final little giggle, um, I, uh, like I said, this is running a multiplication program. So the two parameters I gave it, keep in mind because we're looking at the bus from this side, uh, the bytes or bits are backwards. So this is actually bit zero, bit one, bit two, and bit three. 
Uh, but the two numbers I chose for it to multiply together are 6 and 7. <laughs> so if you're good at uh, arithmetic yourself, go ahead and work out the answer to that. Otherwise, we'll uh, wait a little bit for the halt, and we'll see what the answer is. And uh, like I said, if you run the numbers yourself and you get the references that I'm making, you'll, you'll give, get a little laugh. Um, but otherwise, we'll run through it here. And uh, yeah, so we can see uh, lots of stuff going on. We see the flag uh, register being updated and such. The accumulator uh, is bringing data in and sending data out. Program counter is going nuts. Um, yeah, lots of stuff happening. And I, I would go through all this, but the thing is, it's like I've already explained a lot of this in my last couple of videos. Um, so I don't know if it's really necessary but we could just to pass the time. Um, let's see, we're on instruction 14 right now, and depending on if this jump succeeds or fails, it looks like it succeeded. So this is not the final iteration. Um, this, is, Like I said, this, demo, this uh, program demonstrates uh, conditional and unconditional jumping as well as uh, successful and uncon uh, unsuccessful conditional jumping. So uh, there are loops that it goes through. Uh, in fact, I believe the way this is set up is the loop starts at address Five, one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five. This one. So it starts here, um, and then it goes all the way to address fourteen, where we encounter the jump, um, which, if it's successful, goes back to five, uh, and if it's unsuccessful, will go to uh, address fifteen, which is a halt. So as soon as we see the halt, we know it's done. Um, yeah. Actually, I could explain how the program works. It's it's quite simple, actually. Um, so in order to save on some commands and some registers, what I actually do is I actually just import um, my count, um, sorry, my count nibble, I guess, uh, which is uh, basically all I'm doing is I'm taking this value and adding it to itself um, this amount of times. And this is what I'm counting. So I bring that into RAM. Um, and then for each iteration, I'm basically taking uh, what's located in the lower portion of the two nibbles here, which is this one, bringing into the accumulator, uh, adding what's on the other port to it, uh, and this of course demonstrates uh, direct from port arithmetic functions, uh, then taking it out and putting it back into this location so it saves it, and then whilst the carry is still set, I'll bring in the high uh, byte here, uh, bring it in with um, with addition, so this it demonstrates arithmetic from RAM. Um, which will basically add nothing to it plus the carry, so it's basically adding one if there's a carry, uh, and then send it back out. And then uh, you can see there's actually one right here, so that was done at least uh, successful at least once. Um, and then that does uh, that completes the multi-byte or multi-nibble arithmetic process. And then the final process is to bring in the third byte, which was my count, uh, decremented, which is basically adding 15 to it or adding signed negative one, um, and then checking the carry flag, was it? Was it the carry? No, 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 sorry, it, it was checking the um, the zero flag, this one right here. Uh, and the reason being is if the result, because uh, when you're subtracting a signed number, it's always going to have a carry, uh, so that's pretty much a given. But if the, um, if the result is zero, that means we went from one to zero. Uh, which means we've completed the number of iterations, and at that point, the conditional jump will fail, and it will proceed to the halt. So, looks like um, looks like we still got a, f a l fair bit of a ways to go. Uh, this is not a fast computer, uh, and that's actually something that I'm going to talk about here after this thing's done with its calculations. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's still pretty good for its size, and like I said, this is pretty, you know, significantly faster than Skittle Bits, and tremendously faster than Blue Wave, I'll tell you what. Um, but yeah, awkwardly just uh, biding my time while it slowly does its calculations. And we should be nearing the end here, possibly. Um, you can see here we've already got, let's see, 16, 8, and 4. So that's going to be 24, 28 in the, uh, in the result here. Um, and of course, like I said, you, you know, this is considered multi-byte multi -byte or multi-nibble, I guess. So even though this is the um, ones bit, because we're bit shifting it over four, this is now the 16. 
Um, so that makes that 32, 64, and 128 back there. And of course, this is this is uh, scalable. Um, so you can, in fact, have 256 on this byte if you wanted to, you know, or on that bit. Um, and this this multi-byte uh, arithmetic functionality is um, something that I actually included in Skittle bits as well. A lot of people were wondering uh, why I had the carry feedback into it into the ALU. Well, that was the reason why. Uh, was that if you were to perform addition or subtraction on a single byte, you could uh, include the carry into the next one, and it would act as if you were doing arithmetic on a 16-bit uh, number, if if you will, you know. So we're on the jump, so it's possible that we may be. No, we are. <laughs> we're still going. Um, yeah, this is a pretty long program. I might just cut it because I'm running out of stuff to talk about. I was expecting. I was expecting uh, this thing to end by the time I was done talking, but I guess not. Yeah. Um, actually, I don't recall this really taking that long, because um, I did run this before and it ran successfully. Um, but it, well, I suppose I did walk away from the computer, so this might take a while. So I'll tell you what, I'll stop recording, and um, as soon as I feel it's nearing the uh, the end of the program, I'll turn the recording back on so you guys can see the results here. Okay, so the nibble in the third register here had just been decremented, so that means we have one more iteration before the program halts. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and fly around a little bit whilst it's doing that so we can get a nice view of everything working again. Yeah, um, I do want to go through a little bit of the, the logic uh, in the control section here because I didn't really uh, cover that all too much in my last video. So I think I covered the logic for the uh, step system in the last finite state machine video. Uh, this one's pretty much the same. We've got the uh, RS normal latch with the rising edge um, trigger on one side and the uh, falling edge reset on the other. Um, the primary difference is what we've got going on into the uh, the weight line is, of course, the weight line itself, uh, that flip-flop, and we've also got the, the halt uh, flip-flop going into that as well. So uh, when the computer halts, it flips that flip-flop, enables the weight, and then the next time it goes into a weight cycle, it's, uh, it's stuck, uh, is how that works. Um, and then we've also got uh, this little contraption here, which is actually a little bit of a delay program. Uh, program, delay circuit, I guess. Not that it delays the clock. The clock goes directly to the finite state machine, but uh, what what this does is when the computer is in the wait cycle, um, it will trigger this RS nor latch, and when that's triggered, um, the falling edge of the clock will reset it, uh, but only after this is off for a little bit. So you just saw it like turn off. So what, what it basically does is um, it typically will miss the first clock cycle, but then the next clock cycle it will hit it. So what ends up happening is this is injecting another wait signal. So whilst it's in the wait signal, it'll tell it to, to keep waiting. Uh, and then after the next uh, fall of the clock, um, it will reset it and then tell it to stop waiting. And this is how I get it to wait uh, for two clock cycles uh, between each instruction. So that's uh, how I slow that down. And I, again, I, I kind of have to do that because of the delay between the instructions up here and the instructions down there. Because if I didn't have that delay, um, nothing would get from here to there in time, and I would basically just perform a, a move operation because a move is zero. Um, and that's all I would be seeing. But yeah. And it looks like the PC just halted. So it's going to... Um, finish the PC increment, go into idle state, and now it's halted. Um, and that was another change that had to happen. I mentioned in the last video that I had one uh, finite state machine state that uh, pointed to zero that wasn't necessary. Uh, and I just took that out out of, er, and I left it in there out of sheer laziness. Well, it's a good thing that I did leave it in there because um, I actually needed to revert that back because the halt state isn't actually a halt state. It's actually the control state. Um, and then what determines whether it's halting or resetting the carry is a by bit, sorry, a bit on the control input, uh, which goes into a MUX circuit over here, if I can get to it, um, right here. So this is the MUX circuit. This is the line that comes from the bit. 
Uh, and then this is the line from the finite state machine for controlling it. This one goes out to the uh, reset, or sorry, the halt, and this one goes to the reset carry. Um, yeah, so I, it's a good thing I left that in there because I had to modify it actually to point back to the PC increment state, uh, which is why when it halted, it actually went to PC increment and then to idle. Whereas normally, before my last video, when it halted, it went straight to idle, and that was the end of that. Uh, yeah. Uh, but the reason why I had that uh, go to PC increment now is because um, if I didn't, when you reset the carry, it would basically go back to idle, and then because we were still on that instruction, it would reset carry again, go back to idle, and then reset carry again, and it would just go back and forth. So uh, I added that so that uh, when it reset the carry, it would increment the PC, uh, and then go back to idle, um, and then determine what to do next. So that's the reason for that. Small little change, but I'm going to go ahead and turn this off just to reduce lag, and we can go ahead and examine the registers and see the result. So, uh, if you haven't figured out what 6 times 7 is already, it's 42. Um, and if we go into the registers here, again, the one back here is the high, uh, high order bit nibble, high order nibble, sorry. This is the low order nibble, and the bit order is least significant over here, and most significant over here. So looking at this, this is the 30 2 bit. So it's 32 plus 8, not plus 4, but plus 2. So 32 plus 8 is 40, plus 2 is 42. So we get the correct answer. And again, <laughs> if, you, uh, if you pay attention to the videos and you keep up with pop culture, or at least non-American pop culture, um, you will get that that is also a reference to Hitchhiker's Guide, <laughs> which this whole computer is really just one reference to Hitchhiker's Guide. Um, because, again, I named it Deep Thought, and I, I figured it was just suiting to, to have it run a multiplication program and have it multiply 6 times 7, because I thought that was just too good of, a, too good of an opportunity to pass up. Um, and like I said, it also demonstrates the uh, ability to do multi-byte, or multi-nibble in this case, um, arithmetic functions, which I've said like five times already, so I'm just going to shut up about that. <clears throat> so yeah, that's, uh, that is Deep Thought complete in and of itself. Um, its next task is going to be designing the Earth to try and figure out the question to life. I'm joking, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, the next part in this uh, is basically just tidying it up a little bit, you know, getting rid of the marker structure here, maybe giving it a nice little shell, and of course the redstone pixel art, um, and then making a release video. Uh, oh, and uh, of course making schematics and documents and instruction sets and all that thing so that people who download this will know how to use this. Um, but then, yeah, that's that's all work on my side. So that's pretty much all that I have to do is just, like I said, clean it up, make the documents, and then the release video. Uh, and this thing is ready to be released. So don't know when to expect it. Maybe sometime in mid-January 2017. Let's aim for that. Mid-January 2017. Uh, is when I'll try and get this released. Um, and other than that, I hope you enjoyed this short little vlog series. Uh, be sure to join me for my next project. Mm, my phone just went off. <laughs> um, be sure to join me for my next project uh, when I am going to try, wh where I will try, I should say, and uh, create a hybrid between uh, my computers and SwiftX16's computers. Uh, there will be more on that explanation uh, when I start the project. So until then, uh, be sure to keep up with my channel if you uh, want to know when that comes out. I have no idea. And my phone's going crazy, so I guess I should probably end this. So I will see you guys when I start the next project. Bye. And real quick, I never got a chance to mention why I'm making a hybrid between my computers and Swift X16's computers because my phone was going crazy. But um, I want to do a hybrid between his and mine because there is no denying it. His computers are far faster than mine. But mine are more powerful than his. So I want to try and create a hybrid uh, to try and get the best of speed and power. So hopefully that'll be a good challenge for us to take on. And I'll see you when that starts.